Dave here, how are you? Dave here. How are you? Today is the 11th of December 2022, the second last show for the year. And at, right at the beginning, I'll let you know that I'm going to take two weeks off, one being Christmas Day. I know I'm a hard bastard. And the other one, New Year's Day, because they fall on Sundays for us, I think. Uh, that should be New Year's Eve and Christmas Eve for everyone else around the world. So I think I think no one's really going to be interested in watching a little bit of woodwork. Today on the show, thank you very much for letting me know that, Peter, that the AV is all good. Morning, Mark. Morning, John. Morning, Matt. Morning, Carl. Happy birthday, Carl, for is it yesterday or is it still your birthday? Let us know in the, in the comments there. You must be what, 35? Amazing. Now, for those who don't know, Carl is the person who sponsored this camera right above me. So when you're looking down on here, it's Carl Camp. That's who, this is the guy who did it for me. Very, very generous chap. Today on the show, we are going to make a bookshelf. And I kind of lied when I said it's a bookshelf. It's actually for Vicky, for her famous Vicky's Vodka. This, this one's, that's her favorite. This one's my favorite. Anyway. We are going to be doing some shows and also markets. So we need something to be able to put these guys in behind us without any risk of the bottles tumbling out because it's an expensive product. We don't want to lose it. So I'm going to create a bookshelf and I'm just going to be starting off with a single layer. Uh, and then we're going to put some inserts in here. We'll use the compact table saw from SawStop and there's some other things I want to tell you about that saw in a second. So we'll be putting some shelves so, or some inserts that can drop in there and then flip into the bottom of these milk crates. Then we can stack the bottles upright for carting and then we put them on display. We'll tip all the crates over. And because the crates are all sorts of weird and wonderful shapes on the sides, we need to have a shelf of some sort to connect to go between the milk crates. When we stack it up like that, we, we intend going four high. That's the story. So that's going to happen. Uh, I also have some pictures of dioramas that when we were at a market yesterday at Barrel, there was a guy there selling his handmade dioramas from old bits of fence palings and uh, toys. They're, they're insane. They're just a magic thing. The, the guy's name is Ken and when I show you his things, uh, he's down in Victoria, and I'll even give you his phone number. If you want to get some, just give him a call. They're really amazing. Very rustic. I've never seen anything like it. Um, a relatively salty 69 years on this earth. Is that right, Carl? Uh, birthday is 10th of December. Okay. Well, Chris, yours was uh, yesterday. Look, everyone's going to tell me their birthday now. <laughs> I was just saying happy birthday, Carl. Um, morning, Brian. Morning, Eric. Morning, James from Montana. Uh, Mark, uh, everyone else, hello. So that's, that's what we're going to do with that. I did tell you I was going to show you some diorama pictures. Jeremy from Lone Dog Workshop came down and saw us at the markets yesterday and gave me a Christmas gift. And I'll show you what that is a little bit later on from his own workshop. Now, if you've got projects that you're doing and you want be to show everyone else, send them in to me. My email is in the video description below. Now, the saw stop, I've been playing around with it. I've nearly finished the dedicated video on it. So far, I'm very impressed. This little saw can cut two and a half inch thick, 63 mil thick red gum. Now, this is an Australian hardwood, very, very tough. I'm amazed. I didn't, I didn't know if it was going to do it. I thought it might struggle a bit, but it just went straight through it. Uh, so we've got that. 
And you might remember that I did a brake activation with this a couple of weeks ago on the show. I've got the saw blade back from the saw doctors and I will show you what I had done to it and we'll put it in my big table saw and we'll put the dial indicator on it and we'll see how much run out or if it warped the, the blade at all from that brake activation. Because that's a story a lot of people say, oh, the blade will be warped and you're staffed, you can't use it anymore. Well, you and I will both find out whether that's true when, when I put it on the dial indicator. I was super surprised to see the look of the blade when it came back from the saw doctor. So we'll, we'll get into that. All right, now, first thing is, I think I've written down some sizes. Yes, I have. Rather than look like a turkey, what I've done is I've written down the sizes of the, the panels that I want. I'm going to use three millimeter MDF for the bases. Remember, this has got to be light because we've got a transporter and all that kind of stuff. Three millimeter for the bases, uh, and the intersecting part, I've got an old piece of plywood up the back there, it's painted grey. I'm going to wait till the end before I do that because if there's a blade activation or brake activation from the paint, I won't be able to do any more. I don't think there'll be a brake activation. I can't see why there'd be any reason. It's not conductive, uh, the plywood is dry, but you and I will both see whether this saw is capable of doing that. Now I can run it in bypass mode to check and I may do that. So we'll see what happens. All right, it's a big show, so we better get started. First thing to do is move these guys out of the way. And I'll have a quick read while I'm doing that. Um, okay, thanks Chris, uh, happy birthday Mark, Chris doing good. Okay, you guys are just chatting to each other, that's wonderful, I don't care. Now I've also slowed down the uh, response, so whilst before it was maybe 10 seconds after I'd say something, you would see it, it's going to be a little bit longer and that allows the uh, text to come up. See, you'll see it coming up at the bottom. Chris, doing good. Others, that's wonderful. I don't care. Okay. <laughs> it's doing it all. All right. So you'll be able to see text. This is, I decided to do this for people that were hearing uh, impaired because I'm starting to go that way. I'm getting a bit deafer as I get older. Uh, just ask Vicky, she'll tell you. All right. Switch over to this one here and we'll do the rip, we'll do the rip first. Now I have the saw set up with, it's going on to the dust extractor over there. <clears throat> now, I don't know if you can see this down here. This is, this is where the dust extractor port is from my uh, Festool shop back with the separator on top. And this is a standard 36 millimeter hose that I'm putting into the port at the back here. And it does go in. And, but the thing is, there's a little bit of a, a blockage there where there's the, the actual body of the saw, the molding and everything. So you have to push it into the left and then it'll slide past that. And because it's a rubber fitting, it'll open up again. I'm using this because I don't know if I will have as much success with my big system. I think this is going to be just as good. Now I did say that I was going to plug it in. I have my big table here as basically an outfeed. It's not the same height. I've got the saw up on the fold up collapsible stand that you can get for the saw stop. I'm not using the blade guard. I'm using a riving knife because I'm also going to be using a sled. Now the sled is very hard to use with a blade guard. So I'm going to be very cautious in how I do this. I'll plug it into the dust extractor. So it will go onto automatic. When I turn the saw on, it should also, I think a new set of glasses might be on the cards as well. It sh I'm going to wind the blade down. We don't want it all the way up there. I'm only doing a small amount. So I'll do a rip first. Now the first rips, this is three millimeter ply, oh sorry, three millimeter MDF. I'll get my little list over here. 
280 by 310. Now these panels are 600 wide, so I'm going to do a 280 millimeter wide rip to start. So I'll lift that up, up and over, locked out of the way, and then I'll slide this across to 280, which is there, and lock it. Front, sorry, the rear and the front are now both locked. There's, there's no moving around. I have calibrated this a little bit and I'll show you how to do that in the video because I found that uh, the fence was in a little bit tight at the back. So I adjust that, there's a little adjustments down there. So I'm not getting this wedging effect as I'm pushing the timber into it. All right, I'm gonna turn the saw on. It'll go through its um, check system. It's green with a red flashing light at the moment. We'll let it keep doing that. Still green. Now this might, this will make a bit of noise when I turn it on. Solid green. I'll make sure I've got enough room behind here. I do. Okay, that's 280. All good. It's good to check around that you've got good area coming in and good area going out. So we'll turn it on. Gonna make noise. The dust extractor is running. too much allowed. I'm going to have a look at that in a second. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? Turn her off now and I'll show you how I'm going to adjust it back. So give me a sec. I have an Allen key here. They, there's an Allen key on board. I'm going to push this, release that. And down here there's a little lug that I'm going to release. And now I'm going to push this across. I still want to leave a little bit. I don't like, I don't, I, I like to ease the back off just a touch, but that was just a little bit too much that I was easing off. Let's see how that goes. I'll put it into this, take it off and I'll run it through the saw again. This is an interesting on the run. Remember, this is live. Get rid of that. That's better. I'm going to run that other one through because it may just take a little bit off the edge. There you go, see it? Okay, that's that. How are we doing for time? Quarter past. Perfect. That's beautiful. All right. I'll bring these over here. Next thing I'm going to do is marry the sled to this saw. I haven't done it yet. We'll release this. Bring that out. A little bit of uh, MDF there. The dog's hiding underneath there. I'm going to raise the blade up a little bit. And lock it. Beautiful. Now this sled has been married to my big table saw. And Krista asked me on the Patreon chat, chat last week, can I show a Rockler sled? being used on this. And I don't mind using this on here because it's a nice small sled. So I think, I think it'll be worthwhile. I need to use this for doing the cross cutting because you don't want to cross cut freehand. It's very dangerous. Now, 
the mitre, sl mitre uh, slots in this are a little, I think they're the normally size, but the mitre gauge that comes with the saw is a little narrow. And I think that's on purpose in case you're on a building site and you get some sawdust stuck in there so it doesn't actually bind. So I think that's the story. I have other mitre, uh, mitre uh, sleds or mitre gauges, I should say, that I use on the big saw. I've, made, I've got one from Incra and it will also work in here, but you have to adjust it a little bit. So let me put the ears on again. Where have I put them? Over, where are they, David? Good on you. There they are. Up on here. Thanks for telling me. Now, I've already done a little bit of a cut on this and I was super impressed. Remember, this is a rip blade. This is a 24 tooth rip blade. And I was super impressed at the entrance and the exit of the cut. I'm going to show you both sides of this sled when I've done that. I'll tighten this up so it doesn't go wandering and make a contact. <laughs> All right, turn around. I gotta show you, this is just amazing. That's, I don't know if you can see that. That's the top. And that is a really clean cut. Now the other side, I'm gonna have a quick check because I couldn't believe it the first time I saw it. I think it's still gonna be just as good. Have a look at the other side. This is the exit. Now remember, this is a rip blade. It's not supposed to cut that clean. That's, that's just, that's a really, really good result. There's a little bit of tear out just here and there, but the rest of it, just beautiful. Okay. Now that I've got past being excited, I'm gonna put it back on the saw and it can sit there. Next thing to do is create a, um, a, f a little stop here so I don't ha so I can set the width because the piece is going to be longer than this stop is going to allow me so I'm going to move that up out of the way put that back over there move this down here I may or may not fit those pieces in here let's have a look they will yep cool so I can I can clamp that now, which is one of the things I love about this. Anyway, bring it back. And what length did I want there, David? I've got the block over here. It's got it written on it. Uh, they're 280 already, so the other length was 310. Now, 310, I'll pull this out and go back. Oh, that's another thing that I hadn't done. I hadn't locked that. Maybe that's why I was getting the, the, um, the run out. I wasn't getting the run out. Hmm, very interesting. Bring this back. I'm curious now. I'm going to lower the blade because I want to see how this lines up against the against this guy. Now I'm hesitating there a bit because there's a little clip is activated. Pull that back, see what happens. Oh, that's nice. That's another way you could set the saw. You could put a cut all the way through and then bring the rip fence back up to the edge of the cut you've just done. I have to think about that a little bit, but I think it, I think it would work. Pull that back, take this out. We want 310, plus I also have the thickness of the block that I'm going to use. This is going to be a stop block. 
And it's important you do it in a certain way, otherwise you're going to run the risk of having a catch. That is 16 millimeters overall, so 310. I need it to be 326. And it's, of course, it's all under here, so I can't see. 326. Done. Put that back. Now, I'll push that back to there. I'm going to raise the blade up so I can see where the blade is actually going to be. It doesn't have to come up any higher than that. Then I get a clamp. And I'm going to... Yeah, I think I'm going to have to go over here and down that way. And then add the 50. So now 326 is going to be 376. <laughs> 376. What I'm doing now is I'm allowing for this. Now, why have I done that? Well, I'll show you. I don't want that there. I want that there like that. I'm going to put that there. Yeah, just there will be fine. Because, I'll move that guy out. That is now going to be three, whoop, when I push this up, that is now going to be 310. Let's check. <laughs> Always a good idea. What's the story? Measure twice, cut once. Two, 310 I wanted. Now, why is that? Um, I was working off the wrong scale, David. That would be why. See, that's why you measure twice. 376. And... No. Because I'm... I'm Okay, so there's another thing. Now I go back to 50. Why do I go back to 50? Because this isn't um, going to affect the height because the rip, the fence, the sled's there. This is lower than the sled, so it's not going to hit it. Okay, there's other things I can do. No, I'll, I'll leave it like that. I was going. I'm, all I would do is start confusing the issue if I if I spoke any more about it, and that would be. If, uh, if this was down below, it's got two settings, I could have it down low, it's the same height as the table. But having it up there is going to be good because the board won't flex as much. It won't be exactly the same thickness as the sled, but it's, you know, it's pretty close. And so now I need to bring this back to 50. So that is 326 again, where we started, I think. And we will measure. And that's going to give me 310. Done. <laughs> measure twice. Always, always, always measure twice. Because you'll think, oh, yeah, that's right. And you, then you really do have to second guess yourself. Okay, slide this through up to there. I can lock it. And now I can cut it. And what's going to happen as I cut it, when it's at the end, it will drop out past this. It's not going to bind on it. Here we go. Start her up again. Done. So it can move away from the blade. It's not, it's not caught in there at all. See, there's plenty of room. That is 310. No, I'm not going to check it. I don't care. It's 310, believe me. Okay. The next one, lock it, all good there. Nah. Always wait for the blade. I don't care if it's a saw stop or not. Just wait for the blade to stop.
I love this little call. Just magic. And it's so, so portable. Like, if you want one, and like, I'm, this is, I'm doing you guys a favor. If you want one and you want to save 5% on the cost of one, I have a link. I made a deal with Carbotech. I said, you want to move these saws? They said, yes. I said, well, give people a bloody reason to move them. So they said, all right, well, what do you want me to do? I said, give them 5%. Give me a link to give people to get 5% off it. It's in the video description below. Buy one. What can I say? It's a lovely table saw. James Finger from Fix It Fingers has just done a little video on it as well. Check it out on his website. And uh, then come back. Don't forget, when you go to the, you have to buy it online to get the discount. You can't just walk into the store and say, oh, I want the, the code Stanton on uh, getting this saw. They're not going to do it. You've got to do it online. Go and have a look in the store. If you want to have a look and play with the saw, you watch me use it. You can watch James's uh, video on it. And then go online, put Stanton in, and away you go. There's 75 bucks. Why throw it away? Okay, so that's that. We're going to do... Look, while I've got it here, I'm going to do the others. I'll get it done, knocked it out of the way. It is such a nice little saw. Bit more noise. Where is it? Down there. I love this little shelf. That's designed so that if you've got the blade guard on and you can have a set so it can come in really close under the blade guard if you're doing real thin stuff. And it's got another setting. It drops it down in line with the table for when you're way out here. It will support the end of this kind of stuff, which is really floppy. That's what it's for. And that paddle is nice and large. I don't have to go looking for it, well, even though I just did. But now after you've used it a couple of times, it's right there. Okay, let's have a look, see if these will fit over here and I'll have a chat. Magic. Okay. Measure once, cut twice. Um, can't you always make two of everything. <laughs> Got to see you later, Peter. Um, Chris, on that cut, once measured twice when I was doing my building apprenticeship, they used to call me 100 mil less. <laughs> if only you had the money to buy it. Well, yep, that's it. If you're in them, I'm, I'm not saying go and rob a bank or anything to buy it. If you're in the market, for a table saw, coming up to Christmas, you think, you know what? Stuff it. <laughs> I'm going to buy myself a present better than socks and undies. Um, oh, Carl, you're watching the... Uh... Yep, the, the closed captions could be fun. All right, let's check this. I want to check it. I should have done it before I started it all up. Okay, so that drops in the bottom fine. So when we load the, the bottles in there, not a problem. That's how we're going to transport it. Now, this is what I want. So now it's a floor that's going to fix all of that down there. Let's throw some in, see what happens. I need to do three deep. Let's see if it's going to do it. I love it. I love it. They're not going to fall out at all. And then we've got Vicky's uh, tall bottles. They're the five. They're seven hundred mil. These are five hundred mil. And then all the way to the front. She will be very happy with that. That's magic. Um, and then we can have a big one in the front there if we want to. We do four deep of these, three deep of those. So four deep would bring that to there. I don't really want to come any further because there is a real big drop off on the front of this crate and they're all going, all going to be the same. 
All right, whilst, now that we've done that little part, what we're going to do is have a look at these dioramas. Keep you entertained. This is such a good idea. She's going to be so happy. Coffee. Now, I told you I was going to give you Ken's phone number. If you're interested. Okay, so Ken's phone number is 0409. It should come up in the captions. I'll start again. 0409598552. See what happens. I'm watching. I'm still watching. I'm waiting for it. Uh, 04 colon 09. That's interesting. Okay. 552. Oh. I'm going to do it again. 0409 598 552. That'll be an interesting thing to see if the captions can pick it up. Let's jump in and have a look at them rather than talking about it. Okay, here we go. This is the first one. These are brilliant. They're rustic. I love them. Absolutely love them. And the next one. And another one. See, this is just something so easy you can make at home. Very easy. As I say, it's just some old fence palings and a, some brads, and away he's gone. Found some old toys lying around. There you go. Very, very Australian uh, theme. Back to me again. I gave you his phone number earlier. What's in the cup? Um, coffee and hot chocolate. Dave, do you get to keep Vicky's vodkas or do you have to return the samples? I oh, know. <laughs> I'm on a drip with these things. She's, uh, she makes these from a potato-based recipe. So they're gluten-free. They have no sulfates in them. Done with a copper still. Draws all that. You do not get a hangover with it. No bad head, no headache. Well, that's how it's been for us, and they're just nice. Anyway, have a look on our website if you want to have a look. Uh, the next thing, the next thing, the next thing. Well, while I'm here, let's have a look. I had a visit yesterday from Jeremy, and he said, here's a Christmas gift for you. And another one. So they're a pair. Aren't they cute? Now, for those that don't know, these are little reindeer and he makes them out of scrap. And it's just beautiful. So that, this one, I, one is camphor and the other one I think is pine. See so this one? That's camphor laurel, all right. My favorite timber. I just love camphor laurel. Yep, this one's pine with a little bit of stain. But he's done such a magic job. Look at them. This is where you find him. Lone Dog Workshop. Aren't they? <laughs> I, better not, I better not leave them together because I might have lots of little ones running around later on. So we'll just put them over to the side in the stable. Out of the way. Next thing, next thing, next thing. I'm wondering whether, I, I'm wondering whether I'll rip these now or not. I think I will. I'm going to try, and you will have seen it here first, if that paint is going to react. Look at that. How accurate is that? I've just popped them together. That is so good. That's four of the boards. How accurate is that saw? 
one, two, three, four, five in that panel. We'll throw them in there so Vicky can use those later on. I'll make the rest of them after the show. Okay, what we're going to do is grab that piece of plywood from over the back and I will rip that down to whatever width I had said I was going to. Now, is this kind of stuff interesting for you? Do you, do you like seeing this kind of stuff? If you do, give me a thumbs up. There's only 23 thumbs up so far. Do this and then other people will come back and say, you know, it's not so bad after all. Am I out of focus there? I think I was, so bring it back. It might pick me up here. I wonder what it's focusing on. Not me right at the moment, or my glasses have got a little bit of dust on them. Let's try that. No, it's still not sharp. It might be picking up on the bottles down here. I'll move them out of the way, out of the camera's field of view. Ah, that one. Done. That's, that's work. That's what it was. It was focusing on a higher contrast for me. What size? What size, David? The next one is 270 wide by 900. Now, as luck would have it, that board is 900. I made these boards years and years and years and years ago to stop young children climbing up my wire railings. Now we've got, got railings up on the house that you know we're up around four meters. This is all done prior to a lot of uh, uh, building regulations that have come out since. Now these railings, meter, ho meter high, which is the standard, and then the, the cables, steel cables, tensioned up, and they've got the right distance. The, the law used to be a sphere of 120 millimeters shall not be able to pass between anything on a, on a, on a handrail a meter high. And that's basically a child's head. We couldn't be able to fit through it. So, but the thing is, of course they're horizontal, they were climbable. And I think they've changed those rules a bit. So these panels, notice up the top there, they've got a hole. And they were for zip ties, and I used to zip tie them to the top uh, strand. And so you'd have these panels which would stop kids climbing. Just a little idea I had. Uh, right, how are we gonna go with this? What do we want? We want 270 wide on this one. I will raise this up and over. Go to 270, which is there. Lock it. This is going to be interesting. You know what, 270 times two is 540. I might go 550 and do a wider rip to start. Then I don't have so much hanging off the edge here. It's going to be safer. 540, can I get out that far is the next question. I can if I put it on the second mount, which is there. Five hundred and forty. I think that's five forty. There. We'll do a measure. When I find my tape again, there it is. Five forty. So I'll go five forty-five. So I've got a little bit more than. Whoop! Caught the camera. <laughs> you know what happened there? I had that plywood panel in front of where the dog sleeps under the bench. <laughs> so she wasn't going to stay there anymore. So she came out. Sorry, Nessie. It's a hard life being a pug at the Stanton household. 540. I'm going to measure the front. It's 45 and the back. Uh, slightly less than 45. I'm going to do a quick adjustment on that. It was pretty close, but I, I will do a quick adjustment on that back one. There, that one's locked, that one's locked, and I'll release this one, and now I can measure it to get it exact. The 
This is such a nice little saw. Lock it. Yes. Yes. It's not, it's not, uh, it's just a reference pin. It's, it's not doing the three point or, or, or a five cut method. It's, i put this back up again. <laughs> it's doing it pretty good. And during a show, pretty good is good enough. Uh, one of the ex-managers of the company I work for ordered some 300 millimeter poles for a local engine that were a little too big. Oh, damn. <laughs> you can't find the thumbs up, Wally. Uh, has your volume gone down? I don't think so. What about if I'm over here? Can you still hear me over here or not? I think you can. I don't know what the story is there for you. It's all good here. I'm going to move this over just a touch so I don't run into that part. Remember, have a good look around so that there's nothing that's going to get in your way. All right, let's do a... I'm looking for the muffs, there they are. Going to cut this. Now, as I said, I'm hoping we're not going to have PC phone or something else. Uh, volume is okay. All right. Okay. Um, I haven't done this before with paint on a saw stop. So this is going to be new for me as well. Could be expensive for me as, <laughs> as well. Let's have a look. Tip that up a touch. Uh, about, about there. And I've got enough room here to push it in and across. I'll do two of them at 540 to start. I'll make sure I've got a nice straight edge on one or the other. Yep, that's pretty good. That's locked. That's locked. That's all right there. Okay. Here we go. That's a little bit dangerous right at the end there. That's where you really need some extra support out the side there. A track saw would have been better for that. And did you notice also that I've got to bring that back over a little? I'm going to bring it over. That's the great thing about life. To there, unlock it. It was just about two mil. We'll see how it goes. I'm gonna run it through again at that, and then I'll run the larger panel through. Perfect. There's a great, that's a good thing for this to, sh to show you. Here we go. Over and down. Now that's going to be the same height as the table, and that'll stop it dropping. See that? I love it. I'm going to bring it in just a touch. 
Stop it. Go again. Much nicer. Beautiful. That's a nice clean cut. Come with the other one now. Not bad. that one out to the side. What was the width I wanted? Two seventy, I think. Now there's two scales at the back here. The black one is when I've got it on the outside. The clear silver one is when it's on the other lug, which is just here. It's about a hundred mil difference. All right, let's try ripping a couple of them. That'll do for that part for those. I may also need to adjust the, um, where are we, come back to this one. I may also need to adjust the actual blade, the armor, sorry, the, um, the trunnion. You can do, there's a bolt underneath and you can adjust the blade left or right. It might need just a little bit of adjustment as well. All right, you should see Dave Soto, subscribers and thumbs down, da da da. Um, anyone who's Coralite on projects, uh, Dave, thank you for the recent review on the budget whetstones. My wife's purchased them and hopefully we'll be here in time for a turkey roast. Yum. Uh, Wally, what you can't find. Okay, cool. Uh, he's found it. All good. Okay, I'm going to go back up and have a quick look. Okay, you guys are doing all sorts of things. Matthew, thank you. <laughs> all right, the next thing, as I said, we're gonna go and have a look on my um, dial indicator on the other saw. Now, the reason being, it's, a, it's, it's my big table saw, so I can get a very, very accurate response. I'm gonna tip this up a little higher. Actually, I'm going to take all of these legs down low. Sorry to not be right there while I'm doing this. 
and I'm going to set the, the camera up right above the dial indicator on top of the saw bench so you can see exactly what I'm seeing. Mm -hmm. And ball head down. That should be okay. I'm going to check, come around your side so I can see what's going on. And camera three. There you go. That's my dial indicator setup. I'll come down further. And have my coffee with me over here as well. Now, as I turn this blade, I have around about four thou of an inch as I rotate the blade. It's not a lot. That little click is the little um, relief point in the blade. There's a cut, so it's just dropped into the cut. So as we're turning, overall, as I said, that's, that's a cut that it drops into. Overall, it's around four thousandths of an inch. I'm going to take the blade out. This is one of my uh, high quality blades that I have. Let's rotate it around so I'm actually in the lock. Such an nice saw, the, the little um, compact table saw. So that's, that's my blade that I was using there. Now I'll show you the blade that I got back from the saw doctor. Now this is Henry Brothers in the Sydney region, out near Windsor, or Vineyard is the exact area. That's the blade. Now just here is where I painted it all with black texture or Sharpie or whatever you want. This tip was gone. There was no tip there. I got them to put a new tip on that and knock the old tip off and replace it. You can see the brazing in behind it. They've sharpened the whole blade as one unit. Now these blades are around $60. It cost me about $50 to have it repaired. But I did that mostly to see what it, how it would go and also to let people know because I could, it could have been a much more expensive blade. Okay, I haven't done this. I have no idea how the dial indicator is going to respond. I'm going to push it down and out to near the edge. So that's almost on 50. Let's just turn it slowly. This could be very embarrassing or it could be fine. So there is 3.7, nearly 4. Uh, so it's still around 4 and coming back. And it's dropped down below. So that's 2. It's gone 2 under and 4 over. So it's 6 thou out. On that particular... Now, I'm having a look. That's where the break hit it. Let's go around to the other side of the blade, 180 degrees. So that's three foul there that has gone back. And then coming back towards, towards there. Actually, I'm going to bring it in a touch because that's an area that looks like it's been ground. So that is two. That's two on top of the five. Make sure that stays there. And so we're looking, looking at about six and a half thou of an inch, maybe seven, which is 0.3. And I'm going to do something as well, which might be interesting to you guys. I'm going to rotate the blade 180 degrees on the saw without letting the arbor turn. 
So I'm going to take it back. Where was it? It did have the black mark. The black mark is just here. I'm going to take it to the other side, which is there. So that black part, which was the, the tooth that had been uh, removed, I've now put it 180 degrees to where it was. Let's see what happens. Because we might see that there might be something in the actual arbor. There might be running... Oh, it went straight into that hole. Can you believe it? Bring it back in a touch. So we're up to 3.53 and then back down to 40, 42, 48, back up to 53 and down to 47 and a half, 48. So that's five. It could be in my arbor that's, that's slightly out, but that's, that's five foul. You know what? It's not bad. That's not bad at all. Now, would you keep the blade or would you get another blade? I'm not sure. What would you do? It's, uh, if it was a more expensive blade and I only had one or two teeth replaced and if there was 80 tips on it. So there's some blades out there that are gonna cost you a couple of hundred dollars. And if you have an activation with one of them, You'd really want to have the thing sharpened and working again rather than spend another couple of hundred dollars. All right, let me have a read down through here. Um, uh, your volume was down, was it, Matthew? Adam, would be interesting to know the difference when centrifugal force is applied and blade alignment. Yeah, um, I'm not going to put my dial indicator on a blade that's spinning. <laughs> it's just not happening. Uh, okay, Mark, how long are you, going to, are you here in April? Uh, Chris, Peter Jensen, so much work available in Western Australia. Indeed. All right, now that's, it was an interesting show today. Uh, there are some things. I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to adjust the blade on this where it's tracking. So it's, I think in the, uh, in the instruction book, they say to make sure that it's tracking parallel to the miter slots and then do the rip fence. So I'll have a look at the adjustments on that. It's deep in the book uh, and I will go and read it and add it to the video that I'm doing. Uh, what else? What else? Um, if there's stuff in the show that you were curious about and you've watched the show after the fact, please leave comments in below. Of course, I do read all of those comments. So for the next 24 to 48 hours, I read all those comments. Even a week or two later, even years later, I read the comments because people will stumble across the show and they'll watch it. and They might have something that no one else has seen. So, right, Dave, what about this? How does that work? And I'll try and address that if I can for you. Remember in the video description down the bottom, if you want to get one of these bad boys, that little compact table saw, and you're in Australia, you want to get it through Carpetech or the distributors in the, in the country, use my code Stanton. That's all you got to do when you get to the shopping cart online. This is not going to happen in a store. You must do this online. Put in the code Stanton. You will get 75 bucks off. There's another blade or halfway towards a break. It's worthwhile doing. Anyway, you have a greasy table saw and had to run a stone on my arbor to get rid of a few thou run out. That could work. Uh, Carl, Dave, when the shop replaced the tooth, do they also test for flatness? Um, there is a grind that they've ground all the way around on both sides and they re-ground all of the teeth. So I think that that is possibly run out on my arbor. I really do. But I think you'll find that they set that blade up in a machine and the machine has got all the gizmos to go and grind it, what have you, both sides and the top and the whole blade has been done. So it would be traveling true on the actual cutting point. The plate, I don't know. And I was working off the plate. I was not dial indicating off the edge of a tooth. So that may be the situation. Uh, Ian, it's got a source. It does have a dust port down the bottom there. Now I will show you. Uh, let me see. What's the best way to do this? I'll get the other camera. And I'll show you how much dust 
has come off the saw, even with doing all this stuff that I've just been doing. I, I've used the, um, the Festool dust extractor. Uh, let's have a look. I'll go to camera three and you can have a look again. That's underneath the saw after I've done all those cuttings with the MDF and also uh, you can see there's a bit of the red gum. I need to tighten that up and that one. The red gum from before when I was cutting it. Uh, this is on the top. If you don't have a blade guard with a dust extraction port on the top, you are going to have less collection. But that's not bad considering how much we put through the saw. And then there's the dust port there, Ian. And I've got a festal hose into it. It's quite a long hose and it went through the separator. And let's have a look inside the separator. You can see how much dust it actually collected that would have been kicking around here. Now, you can see underneath is the red gum. And this is what I was cutting today. So, yes, it's pretty efficient. Pretty efficient. For one of these types of saws, it's very efficient. You'll notice I've got all the um, doors open. Door open there, door open there, and a door open down the back there where the dog's having a snooze. <laughs> On purpose. If I didn't have those doors open, I would have been wearing a dust mask. Jump back over to this one. There we go. Thanks guys, missed the start. Okay. Um, and, someone, and some of that would have been in my lungs, definitely. Definitely. All right. Now, as I said before, next week, oh, I want to show you the um, the cutter that I'm. I've just ordered this cutter. Now, this cutter is a compression cutter. It's a half inch shank, twin bearings, and it's spiral up and spiral down together, and it will do 41 and a half millimeters in thickness of cut, in, in depth of cut. I'm going to be using that on the new show in the, in, the new year, in the new year. So it'll be the second Sunday of the new year that I get back. Come back to this one. I'm gonna take Christmas day and New Year's day off. I'm sorry, but I'm gonna hang out with my family and do silly stuff. <laughs> More silly than I do on the show. Now, I'm going to be building an awning over the window in my office and I'm going to put a solar panel out there because I've got some other things that I'll be doing videos on releasing prior to all of that that you might be interested in seeing. Very interesting stuff. Actually, I've got links in the video description down the bottom for what I'm doing the video on. And it's actually a, a battery generator. Well, it's basically, it's a dirty big battery, but I can run my drop saw off it. I can run the CT26 off it. It's unbelievable be good power at the moment my 3d printers are running from it and being fed by solar it's an uninterruptible power supply all of that kind of stuff if you're going to get one and you want to run the capex and the dust extractor at the same time i advise you to get the bigger unit the 3000 watt model i put a link to both of them down there so just a heads up if you jump in before i do the video and release it get the bigger one you're going to be looking at around 3,000 Australian for it, but have a look at what's comparable out there, and I think you'll be surprised at how good these are. I'll demonstrate it on the new show, and, oh, sorry, maybe even next week I might demonstrate it after I've got this video done. We'll see what happens. Okay, so the, new, the next uh, live stream will be the 8th for Sydney time. It'll be the 8th of January, but we'll have one more show before we shut off for the year. Okay, the bit is unavailable. Brendano, whereabouts are you? Are you in Australia or somewhere else? Because that's an Australian Amazon link and they are available. I've just bought one this morning. So working up north over Christmas. Yes, enjoy the time with your family, Dave. Merry Christmas to all. If anyone else has got an issue with trying to find that, it's, it should be there. I'll, I'm gonna have a quick look myself right now to see if it's still there. And so I'll go down to here and then down to there, click on that link. 
uh, where it says show more and it'll come down and it'll say where is the cutter? Where is the cutter? Oh, it's the one right at the top. Clicking it and what's it say? Waiting. Uh, I have purchased it and now I'll click add to cart. Yep, it's there. So if you're in Australia, yep, that's not a problem. It's an Australian uh, Amazon site. So as I said, it's for, for people in Australia. See, a lot of times in Australia, we have to put up, could I say it that way, put up with what's all been focused on the United States. One of the reasons I started this show was because I wanted to bring a bit of focus back onto what you can purchase in Australia. Now, also, I know that with TSO, it's very expensive to have shipping over there, and I'm actually talking to TSO to see if we can fix that. I have promised to do it, and I'm working on it. TSO are working on it as well see what happens in the new year. All right, I'm gonna close that now because I've already bought one of those. I don't need to get a second one. Um, yeah, so this will be a nice awning, solar panel, nice angel wing style brackets that I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna make a template and I'm gonna follow that template with the, uh, the bearing cutter. I'm not expecting that bearing cutter to arrive until the new year. So I can get the template and everything done, show you the design of how I'm gonna do it show you the, uh, the EcoFlow uh, generator and actually run some of the machines on it and you will just fall over <laughs> because you'll be amazed as I was when I first did it. Anyway, and I'll show you how I can charge it from my solar panels as well. And with a flat pack solar panel, I can just lay across the windscreen on the car. Amazing. What a, what a time to live. All right, that's going to be it, guys. Look after yourselves, be nice to each other, and we'll have the Patreon chat in a minute. See you there. See you next week. Bye.